Tonight, Apple officially announces their big event without announcing anything. Several U.S. banks are hacked and Google's plans for a drone delivery program. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 161 for Thursday, August 28th, 2014. This episode is brought to you by NatureBox. Order great tasting, healthy snacks delivered right to your door. Forget the vending machine and get in shape with healthy, delicious treats like chocolate quinoa granola. To get 50% off your first box, go to naturebox.com slash twits. I'm Sarah Lane, and let's get right to the tech feed. In fact, let's start off with a semi-weekly security nightmare that is... Uh, something that we do a lot more of these days. A number of United States banks, including J.P. Morgan Chase, experienced a series of coordinated attacks by hackers this month, according to four people briefed on a continuing investigation speaking to the New York Times. The hackers reportedly stole gigabytes of data, including checking and savings account information, what the security experts described as a sophisticated cyber attack. The FBI is now investigating, and over the last few weeks, multiple security firms have also been brought in to conduct forensic studies of the penetrated computer networks. At this point, J.P. Morgan has not seen any increased fraud levels, says one person familiar with the situation to the Times. Bloomberg originally reported these attacks and pointed to hackers based in Russia, but security experts and government officials say they have not yet made that conclusion. Well, it's finally, 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 finally official. Apple sent out press invitations confirming that it will indeed hold a special event on September 9th in Cupertino, California, where the company is headquartered. The invitation merely says, wish we could say more. Apple may not be saying more, but Wired is reporting that sources familiar with the next iPhone say it will feature its own payment platform, which will involve NFC. With over 800 million credit cards already on file through iTunes accounts, that's not too far-fetched for Apple to do. Plus, as Wired notes, over the years, the company has filed a number of patents relating to an e-wallet platform. For example, back in January, one patent described how dual wireless protocols like NFC and Bluetooth could be paired to complete a transaction transaction while sensitive data is stored in a secure element in the device's hardware. The information has also reported that Apple has had conversations with payment companies in recent months and that Apple's solution will incorporate a so-called secure element in the phone where sensitive financial information would be stored. But back to that event on the 9th. The company isn't planning to host the event at its headquarters in Cupertino, but at the Flint Center for the Performing Arts at De Anza College, which is the same location Steve Jobs introduced the original Mac 30 years ago. Apple appears to have built some sort of a large structure on campus. It's behind a white barricade. Mac Rumors has published images sent in by a reader of this mysterious structure at the Flint Center. Looks to be about three stories high and protected by a lot of security. Administrators had previously declined to comment on what it was, stating only, quote, we are not at liberty, liberty to discuss that due to client wishes. To round out Apple News today, and I swear this is the end, the Financial Times reports that the company has updated its health kit privacy policy for developers to keep user data out of the hands of advertisers and data brokers and will stop third-party apps from using personal data collected while using the health kit platform for anything other than informing users about their health. HealthKit was announced at WWDC back in June as part of Apple's upcoming iOS 8 launch and is a central repository that collects data from all third-party health apps on a device that enables the collection. Microsoft has announced that CEO Satya Nadella will visit China in late September in the midst of an antitrust investigation that the Chinese government is conducting into the company. Nadella took over as Microsoft CEO back in February, but it isn't clear if the visit will include meeting with Chinese government representatives or with the State Administration for Industry and Commerce, or S. Uh, SAIC, which is one of China's antitrust regulators. SAIC officials didn't uh, comment, and Microsoft spokesman said, quote, Satya's trip was planned before the Chinese government investigation began. But they're probably going to bleed into each other a bit. Amazon is readying video streams in 4K, which may come as early as October of this year, according to a press release from Samsung? 
yeah, actually, Samsung announced this morning that its 2014 Smart UHD or Ultra High Def 4K TV line will be able to support Amazon's Prime Instant Video Ultra HD streaming service when it launches in October. It's not a surprise that 4K is coming to Amazon. Last week, an Amazon marketing director confirmed that the company has a team dedicated to preparing and releasing 4K content this year. And Amazon Studios has already announced it plans to shoot each of its original series in 4K resolution going forward. Leap Motion debuted its desktop gesture control device about a year ago. And today got a big software update as well as a new small plastic clip that integrates the Leap Motion controller with Oculus Rift. Now, Oculus doesn't have native hand tracking, which means that gestures beyond turning your head from side to side in virtual reality means investing in accessories like joysticks or sensors. Leap Motion specializes in hand tracking, so this is a powerful combination. The clip is available to developers for $19.99 and holds the Leap Motion to the front of the Rift mask. The new software adapts the device to track movement from the top instead of just the bottom, which means that the Leap Motion can look down at a user's hands instead of looking up from a desktop. Coming up for the first time ever, a 3D printed vertebrae is used in surgery. And in just a few, I'll talk with Reeb Albergati from the Wall Street Journal about apps getting blocked from app stores and Google secretly developing a drone delivery program. Whew. But first, would you like to snack more? I would love to snack more. I have a sugar problem. I need to get rid of my guilt and I know how to do it. It's Nature Box. Nature Box snacks have zero trans fats, zero high fructose corn syrup. That stuff is bad for you and nothing artificial. Nature Box sends great tasting snacks to your door or your office or your tent. I don't know. With free shipping anywhere in the US, here's how it works. You click on the continue button to choose between three subscription options and then just place your order. Vegan, soy free, gluten conscious, nut free, all those options are there. You can also select by taste, savory, sweet, or spicy. I think everybody knows which one I like the best. Nature Box has over 100 unique snacks to excite and delight every palate. Mexicana mango, anybody? Citrus kicked almonds? I'm not going to keep going because I'm really hungry. To get 50% off your first box, go to naturebox.com slash twit. And we thank Naturebox for their continued support of tech news tonight. Joining us now is Reed Albergati, tech reporter at the Wall Street Journal. Hello and welcome back, Reed. Hi, thanks for having me. You just sitting down there? What's going on? <laughs> I, just, I was uh, <laughs> doing other things and I kind of zoned out. You know, let me make sure the camera's right. <laughs> no problem. Hey, let's talk about a story that actually just came in before we started recording uh, this episode that Google is developing a secret drone delivery program. At least what I know so far is that apparently the company's been working for about two years on this program. Sounds like it was in Australia in total secret. How do they pull this off? Well, I mean, it was on, looked like the, from the video that it was on some farm in Australia. Um, but I'm not sure how secret it is. I mean, we've heard rumors that Google was doing something like this. And, and here it is in a, a giant uh, press release today. Um, and I'll also say that, you know, I watched the 60 Minutes report on Amazon. And it looks like Amazon's drone is able to deliver packages. And Google's delivers some kind of plastic flask. So if you're ordering plastic flasks, this is the drone for you. <laughs> okay, so besides, okay, so we, we are familiar with Amazon um, testing out drone delivery service. Obviously, the company is keen to make that happen as seamlessly as possible. Does it seem like Google would be directly competing with Amazon, or are we talking about delivery of completely different things? No, I think these two companies, uh, this is just an example of how these two are, are really competing head to head, um, you know, in all sorts of areas now. And uh, we've all seen the, the Google product listing advertisements on, you know, when we do our searches and you can really order almost directly through Google now. So, yeah, I would say these are these are two competitors and Google needs to stay on top of it with their own a drone delivery system, which is a long way off. I mean, both of these are kind of fiction at this point. I mean, the regulatory hurdles are so high. Uh, you know, who knows how long it'll take to actually implement this. But, you know, there. I think we're going to see more and more examples like this of these two companies competing. Obviously, Amazon is all about delivery of products and goods. It does, does it very well. 
Google, though, this is part of uh, Google X Labs, which is, you know, it's, 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 it's a little bit of that, you know, pie in the sky, let's get to space. You know, the, the stuff that Google uh, X is doing in many cases seems like the future. Do you think that a company like Google has a leg up on Amazon in terms of just having the sheer technology and, and, and processing power behind something like this? Regulatory issues aside. I think it's hard to say Google has a leg up on on deliveries and online purchases over Amazon. I mean, I ordered a random item the other day on Amazon and it came literally the same day to my door. I mean, this wasn't some kind of, you know, common item. It was actually a, a bike part. Um, so, I mean, if they're if they're able to deliver same day items like that, um, I'd say Amazon has a big, big head start over anyone. Let's move, uh, switch gears, uh, another Google story, but this is all on the software side. Uh, article you published on the Wall Street Journal today, why some privacy apps get blocked from the Android Play Store. A uh, little background, Google removed a smartphone app called Disconnect on Tuesday from the Play Store and said that it violated a policy prohibiting software that interferes with other apps. Now, the app developer says, no, I'm in compliance. So what happened? Well, what's interesting about this is the Google Play Store is known for being so much more open than the Apple, you know, iTunes App Store. Um, but in this one specific area, privacy apps that stop other apps from pulling your information, from, you know, taking your personal information off of your phone, Google seems to be very, very closed. And what companies like Disconnect are saying is that this is, in this instance, Disconnect is really threatening Google's underlying business model, which is collecting personal information for advertising purposes. And, you know, the whole app ecosystem in the Play Store really revolves around apps being able to collect data. Data is the new, you know, they call it the new gold in the tech industry. And then not just the tech industry. I mean, every company is trying to compile huge sets of data about their customers and either use that for their own marketing or other sales purposes or sell that data. So it, these types of apps, I, I guess, um, it looks like are a threat. Google. All right, Reed. So if, if Google Play is trying to, 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 to clamp down on apps that are circumventing Google getting data uh, by talking uh, directly to other apps because it wants to sell ads, that makes sense for Google, but does it does it seem like Google's going more the way of Apple's App Store, which is pretty restricted? I would say I don't think this is the beginning of a new trend for Google, or at least it doesn't seem that way. Uh, you know, where the Google Play Store becomes very restrictive, you know, blocking apps that are kind of silly or erroneous that have no point or are really low quality. Um, I think you'll you'll still see the Play Store much more open um, and and pliable than the App Store, but I think in this one area um, we're starting to see a trend. I mean, uh, a year ago they they blocked another few apps that had similar qualities that really prevented other apps from you know pulling your information off of your phone, and I, I think it's it's interesting because there's also a lot more attention being paid to the privacy concerns in, in the Android Play Store. I mean, we saw a huge controversy over Facebook, the Facebook Messenger app, which people are now required to use if they want to send mobile messages over Facebook. Um, in that case, there were all these, these lists of permissions that the app requested of users, and users have to agree to you know, allow these permissions up front and all of them. They can't pick and choose which ones they want to allow and not allow. So here, where, where they're blocking apps that really give you control over your data, um, and at the same time, you know, people are paying more attention to the data they're giving up, I think we could see the issue come to a head. Reed Albergati is a tech reporter at The Wall Street Journal. Thanks so much for joining us, Reed. We talked drones and apps. We were kind of all over the place today. Let folks know where they can keep up with your work. Thanks so much for having me. Um, you could reach me on uh, WSJ.com and also WSJD, our tech-specific website. And you can get me personally on Twitter, at Reed Albergati. Thanks so much, Reed, and come back again soon. I will. Thanks for having me.
All right, finally, for the first time in history, this is a big one, guys. Medical researchers have used 3D printing technology to replace a bone in the spine of a 12-year-old boy. This is in China. Dr. Liu Zongzhen, director of the orthopedics department at Peking University, says, quote, this is the first use of a 3D printed vertebrae as an implant for orthopedic spine surgery in the world. After a sports-related injury, doctors found Ewing sarcoma, which is a rare bone cancer with a malignant tumor growing in the boy's second vertebra, which needed to be removed and then replaced. Now, that can be done, but usually it's a months-long process of recovery in hospitals and, and, and medical bills. The Chinese team printed the implant using titanium powder, which is a material most orthopedic implants are made from because it's biocompatible and it's light and it's strong. Now, Forbes notes that the orthopedic implant industry is projected to grow 7.7% per year in the U.S. alone to $52 billion by 2015. That's according to a free Donia report. We are living in the future. But don't break your neck. That would be just not good. That's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. Subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2. You can always write us with feedback or questions or comments at TN2 at twit.tv. And don't miss Tech News Today. That's tomorrow and every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. We'll see you tomorrow. I'm Sarah Lane. Thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by cashfly.com.